So far we have learned some of the basic ways to store and manipulate data in C++, but each example has been highly specialized. That is, it will only do a certain thing and it will only do it once. Even though this for loop will execute five times, the for loop itself is only run once. And it would be better if we could write more general code that can serve a number of purposes and be referenced multiple times without having to repeat ourselves. Say we wanted to do this twice, we would have to write the same for loop again. And just like we didn't want to write this statement multiple times, we don't want to write this statement multiple times. So now we are going to use what are called functions. And we talked about functions a little bit when I first introduced the int main function. But now we're going to write our own functions. So let's set this up. I'm going to change temperatures to be a single value. We'll call it x. We're no longer going to use an array. And let's set it equal to 1. And we're going to output x. So let's say we want to manipulate x. Rather than directly manipulating it down here, we're going to create a new block of code. And we'll call it int manipulate x. So if you remember back to our discussion of int main, int is specifying that the result of this function is going to be an integer value. So we're going to need to return something. And most likely we're going to want to return x. But before we return x, we want to manipulate it somehow. So let's say x equals x plus 1. Now this block of code will not run until it is called. So in my main function, I have to actually reference manipulate x. So I'm just going to say manipulate x. And this line of code in main tells these lines of code to run. However, we have a problem. The variable x exists in the function main but it does not exist in my function manipulate x. This is called the scope of a variable, and it refers to where in the program certain things exist. So in this example, x exists in this block of code, but not in this block of code. So when I call manipulate x, I actually need to send x along with it. So first in the function itself, in my parentheses, I'm going to specify that I'm going to be getting a variable called x, and it is of the data type int. So now the x that exists down here can be passed in to the function. So in addition to calling the function itself, I'm also going to send it my current value for x. This current value is passed here. So then when I say x equals x plus 1, we're going to manipulate it. However, again, scope comes into play because this manipulation only has the scope of this function. So my new value for x doesn't exist once I come back to this function after this one has executed. And that's why I have my return statement. So just like I sent the value x into the function, my return function is going to send it back out. And I need x available to catch that return. So when I compile and run this program, the compiler will first say that int main is the main body of code to be executed. It will create my variable x with the value of 1. It will then call manipulate x, sending it my x value of 1. That will come up to this block of code, where x will be set equal to itself plus 1. And then x will be sent back out of the function and stored in x again. So when I print out x, it should be 2. If I compile and run, we get 2. But this is not a very useful function, mainly because it only does one thing. It adds 1 to whatever you send in, and there are already things that do this. The function could be made slightly more useful if I can specify what value I want to add to it. And I can do that by passing in another variable. So I can say int y. Then when I am adding something to it, I'm going to say x equals x plus y and still return x. 
But down here, when I call the function, I need to give a value for y. So let's say 5. So once again, int main runs first. We set x equal to 1. We then call the manipulate x function and send it the current value of x and the value 5, which are stored as x and y in the manipulate x function. We then set x equal to x plus y, and we send x back out of the function, which is stored here and then printed out to the screen. So when we run this, we should get 6. And you can, in fact, make these functions as complicated as you want, and you can call other functions within the functions. So let's make one more. Let's say int manipulate x again, and we'll say int x, int y. And we'll do exactly the same thing. So in our original manipulate x statement, we can now say x equals manipulate x again, and we'll also pass it x and y. So when we compile and run the program, int main runs first, we set x equal to 1, we call manipulate x with the values x and 5, so passing 1 and 5 in here. We set x equal to x plus y, so now x equals 6, and then we call our manipulate x again function with the values of 6 and 5. So now we come up here to manipulate x again with 6 and 5. We set x equal to 6 plus 5, so now x equals 11. 11 is sent back from manipulate x again, stored in x, and then sent out of manipulate x which then comes down here, and we get 11. So if we compile and run, 11 is our result. As I mentioned earlier, we have specified that the return type of these functions is going to be an integer, but we can in fact have different values returned. So let's clear this, go back to two functions, and instead of x plus y, let's say x divided by y. And we can look at our example and say 1 divided by 5 is going to be 0.2. So this, as an integer, won't work. But we can make it a float. The problem we'll run into, though, is that x is an integer. So we will want to change it here, and we'll want to change it here. The reason for this is when we do the calculation x divided by y and get a floating point decimal, as our result, and then try and store it in x. Unless x is of a data type that can store a float, it won't work. We need x to be a float here, which means we need it to be a float here, which means we need it to be a float here and here. So now if I run this, and my mistake, I forgot to remove this function. So let's clear that, compile, run, and we get 0.2 as our output. So we use a function to declare a certain block of code that will be called elsewhere, perhaps multiple times, and given specific parameters. These functions are declared with a certain data type, and they return that data type back out of the function. Now the last thing I want to show you is that float and return are not necessary for every function. You can have a function that returns nothing. And we do that with a data type called void. And let's call this say hello. We will pass it no values. And inside the code, we will just print hello. Let's call this function down here in main. So we'll just say, say hello. So when we compile, did I not say standard C out? I did say standard C out. Ah, I put one colon instead of two. Silly mistakes, <laughs> that will happen. So let's try that again. Compile, execute. And you'll see it first says hello, and then it says 0 
So not every function has a return type, and when they don't, they don't need to specify a data type. You will instead just say void and provide a block of code to run. So if this video was useful for you, please leave a like. It helps me grow the channel and it will help other people find the video. And again, if you would like to see these tools used in a broader context, I recommend checking out my developer diary series where I am working long term on big projects and actually putting these tools to use. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.